All right, so for this video, been going kind of viral. I have been planning on reacting to this in another video that he had made, but give me high rather. He's just really good at making these viral videos for the NBA, and it's only right that we react to it. But this has been going viral like after the fact. This is a long time after. I think this video like at least two years old, and people been taking this pyramid and they've been posting TikTok shorts, videos, all type of stuff. So we're going to hop into it. We're going to do our part. I think it is a two-part special, so we're going to see how this go. But, yeah, if you guys want more of these NBA reactions, just like the video, subscribe if you're new. Without further ado, though, let's hop into it. This is a basketball pyramid of greatness, and today we're going to be making one. Now, the other day, while tuning into the always insightful Colin Cowherd, I watched as he elaborated on a segment regarding a basketball pyramid of greatness. You've probably seen similar charts. Players listed in a pyramid formation, the bottom of the pyramid containing the most players, the top containing the least, and the greatness of these players. Uh, let's see. KD. I don't think KD and this nigga is in a different tier. Tim Duncan and Kobe, definitely not different. If anything, it's the other way around. I ain't gonna lie. Kareem in tier three is crazy. Kareem in tier three is crazy. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not mad at some of the people that's in this tier. Dirk being in this tier is crazy, though. I'm not really with that. I'm not really with that. Curry should be higher. I would put D-Way higher, but that is my favorite player, so I do got buys. But besides Curry, I think everybody else straight. Like, Oscar, I guess you could argue... KG, maybe you could argue. I'm not really arguing that. Only person I would argue is really Curry and D-Wade for me. Tier 4. Yeah, I'm not. I might move Moses Malone to Tier 4 from Tier 5. I might move Moses Malone to Tier 4 tier, instead of Tier 5. Maybe Scotty too. No, I probably would move Scotty Tier 4. But I definitely would move Scotty Tier 4. Everybody else is straight, though, in my opinion. Players in ascending order. Just to even make this pyramid, a player must virtually be universally regarded as a top 50 player of all time, some of which are up for debate and opinion. So in this particular case, Colin was breaking down a pyramid with about 30 players. The top 30 players of all time, according to NBA Chemistry and Ballers Tribune on Instagram. Colin made a few of his own personal corrections to the pyramid, but overall, he agreed with it. And I somewhat agree with this pyramid as well. However, I think we can do better. So today, I'm going to create my own GOAT basketball pyramid, break down each and every player on my greatness pyramid, and elaborate on each pick as well. But before I do, we need a little bit of context here. Basketball pyramids are nothing new. Okay, ringless pyramid. Um... Um, I'll probably put AD higher. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really understanding what the hell you, you taking Grant Hill over AD for. Dominique really should be higher too. Dominique is not in the same tier as these players. I love T-Mac. CP3 should be higher too. But nah. Patch and Ewan might should be higher too. But nah. But nah. Pete Maravich might should be higher. I don't know. I'm not really. I'm not really too crazy on that one. I've definitely put AD higher. AD should be like tier two, but he's not even ringless anymore. Let's just show you how old this is. Form, they're just a visual representation of the greatest. Okay, so what is this? Three point shooting three pyramid. Okay, what would I change here? Curry definitely. That's Otto. Tier two. I'm not mad at. I'm not mad at tier two. I might throw KD in tier two, but I'm not mad at it. Harden should be higher. I don't see Dame. Where Damian Lillard at? Okay, Dame right here. Yeah, Harden and Dame should probably be higher. Harden and Dame probably should be higher. It's some new niggas that's gonna be on here though, for sure. Of all time. For the of course, future. According to the person making the period. Best coaches? All time? Doc? Oh my god. Doc lower. Spo and Kerr higher. For sure. For sure. Tom Thibodeau is a tier five coach all time. It is crazy. That is crazy. 
I ain't gonna lie. That is crazy. That is crazy. Having these two niggas with these these guys, RP Flip Saunders, I don't know if I can get behind that, though. Like, how are these two not better than... I'm not mad at him, though. I'm not, I'm not mad at him. I'm not mad at him. But these two, mm, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can do that. I would honestly put these guys in this area, probably. Honestly. But what makes this specific method of organizing a GOAT list a bit more practical than other methods is that rather than listing each player one after another, a pyramid formation allows you to create tiers or yep. levels to greatness. It's pretty much a tier list, though. It's not really a pyramid. It's just a tier list. I did my own little all-time NBA player tier list. I got to do the best version of it, though. You can just simply put them in the same tier. Is Paul Pierce better than Gary Payton, or is Gary Payton greater than Paul Pierce? Well... That depends on who you ask, but you can certainly say that they belong on the same tier. Tier. Of the basketball greatness pyramid allows you to rank players all time without being so specific that you're. Only thing I would say though, I know I don't know if he's gonna say this, but I would definitely say MJ is on a tier of his own. I know a lot of people don't really agree with that. I would do that though. If we talk about greatness, personally, that's what I would do. And that's not even my time. In a fairly accurate and universal. But I would do that. And then tier two, I probably have Braun and Kareem. And then I have a lot more people in my tier three. And respectable basketball pyramid. Within his book, Bill established the credentials. May even put Magic in that tier two, including NBA championships, regular season and playoff statistics, as well as longevity and flair. As a whole, a lot of things have changed since his original pyramid in 2009. But if you take a look at the top 40 players on Bill's basketball pyramid, not too much has shifted. Tim Duncan won another title. LeBron won three titles, three finals MVPs, and two more regular season MVPs. Dwayne Wade. Oh, so hold on. Look at this. What is Pantheon? Okay, so I'm guessing it's going this way? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's definitely going this way. I'm like, I was like, because what the fuck? D Wade higher than Braun, Tim Duncan, Kobe? And then I see MJ1. I was like, okay, okay, I'm tripping, I'm tripping. But okay. It kind of is crazy to see somebody say Braun is 20 all times. I'm going to be honest. I don't know how you ever had D Wade this low. Bro, people was comp I don't know. I, I I just don't get that one. But Wade won two more titles and that's me. One I am a D Wade fan. Well. I can't lie. You could I do got bias. This is an updated version of the NBA at 50, the 50 greatest players of all time back in 1996. At the time, this was the most reputable list to date. But that was 14 years before Bill published his list. And in that it don't even got Kobe on it. That's how you know how old that list is. Bill's pyramid is. There's a few problems I have with it. Of course, this is all my personal opinion, but first of all, Kobe is too low. This was ah too low. I don't know about that one, ganker. I don't know about that one, gang. I mean, I don't, no, I don't know about that one, gang. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. R.P. Bean though. I don't know how that did that. R.P. Bean, but I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that one. Two more rings, and he's who would out of all these people that he has him over? Who would you put him over? Will? I can see the argument for Wilt. Not put him over Tim. Not put him over uh, Magic. Not put him over Kareem, Bill Russell, Matt, and Michael. I can see the argument for Wilt, maybe Larry. I'm not I'm not really too mad at those arguments, but in an era with only eight to ten teams, I think he's ranked a bit too high. I feel like that number is good because I wouldn't put Kobe over LeBron. I wouldn't put him over um Hakeem. Some people that he's over that I wouldn't put him over. Resume, which clearly plays a large role in his position on this list, but as a player, I don't really see him as a top 90 or even top 100 player of all time. But with that being said, I can understand why he falls where he does on this list, considering the man was a big contributor to seven titles. Chris Paul made it on the list after just four seasons in the NBA at number 90, which is damn, that's impressive. low. Now, there's a Reddit thread on this basketball pyramid back in 2017, and most fans agree that if you were to rewrite this pyramid at the time, Wade and Dirk would both make it into the top 25. Easily. Steph makes the list, and LeBron creeps up into the top five. This pyramid is impressive because it has 96 players, and the formula in which Bill ranks these players 
is concise and consistent. Bill has a little bit of a hometown bias towards his Celtics, but other than that, it's pretty great. Another basketball period. Damn, we got a bias towards them Celtics boys. John Havlicek, 14? Kevin Garnett honestly should be higher. Like, all that bias stuff aside, he should honestly be higher. I'm surprised he only got Paul jo Paul Pierce so I said Paul Paul Pierce so low to be honest. Bill Russell too, R.P. Uh, Bill man. But yeah, I, I'm not putting him too. That That's for sure. And the one that I featured at the beginning of this video was a goat pyramid made by NBA Chemistry and Ballers Tribune on Instagram. Now in their pyramid, they created five different tiers. I don't even think that that list has Shaq over Kobe. I'm definitely putting Shaq over Kobe. I think this pyramid is decent. It's good, but personally, that's just me though. I don't know what's up with this picture of Shaq in a Celtics jersey though. That's crazy. My own pyramid, but a few things that I respectfully disagree with. Dirk is too high. I mean, he is a legend, but when you yeah, Dirk is way too high things, for me. When you compare his resume and his accomplishments to some of the other guys on this list, I think he should be a bit lower than where he is. Yeah, if I would Dirk just put him four though. Two, then Duncan, Bird, and Kareem must be tier two as well. Yeah, I facts. Like how they have KD up there, although he still has a lot of basketball ahead of him, there is no denying his greatness. I think they have Vince Carter a little too high. I love what he's done for the game. I wasn't going to say it. I wasn't going to say it, but that's facts. Things considered, he isn't as good as some of these other players. No MVPs, no scoring titles, no titles. He just played a long time. Doesn't look quite right. But for me, that ain't, that's a hey, facts. For me, it don't look that crazy. Um, That's kind of crazy to me. Longevity is important, but personally, I value a player's peak more than their longevity. Hey. Hey, we consist. Hey, that's facts. I don't know what people be on with these longevity ass takes, bro. Nobody care about how you good with how good you was at the end of your career, your peak. What? How good were you at the best of you being your best? Was your best better than somebody else's best? Why are we comparing somebody at their worst comparing to somebody at somebody else at their worst? Like that's like how is that a comparison, bro? I don't get that. I don't really get that. When you old and you not really as athletic no more. Like, come on, bro. Like, what are we talking about? How how do y'all even do that? I don't know, bro. Y'all, I guess y'all be trying to do whatever y'all can. But peak, the peak is the easiest, most comparable thing possible. That's just me. Some players played for 15 plus seasons, but never made an all-star team. Others played for a decade and lit the league on fire for a couple of seasons. I like to lean towards the players who reached the highest peak rather than the players who were the most consistent. Facts. Of course, both of these qualities are extremely important. Yeah. I would say that my list is a combination of skill, accomplishments, and quality of career. Because it's the greatest. When it comes to greatest, that's what it, it's what it's about. I mean, skill kind of does make it kind of does make a difference. But when we talk about greatest, that is accomplishments. When it comes to personal accomplishments. And team accomplishments. So you got to take... It's really going to be mainly based off that for me. Let's see what he's saying, Second, though. as much as I would like to make a list on pure basketball ability, there are other factors that come into play. Okay, so that... I, when I'm talking about pure basketball ability, I'm talking about best. And straight basketball talent, I would have a guy like Tracy McGrady in my all-time top 20 list. Facts. Of course, we have to consider things like accolades, rings, career numbers, accomplishments... And that's where T Mac falls short and falls out of this list. For example, only thing about best though, when it comes to doing a best list, it's hard to do them like T Max and players like that. But then you still gotta think about them bigs. The big, like it's so many good bigs. So it's like, yeah, you can do that. But like when it comes to do the best, like you wanna put the KDs high, you wanna put the T Max high. But you still got to think about them big men because at the end of the day, them big men is still them like them 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 some of the most skilled players like Hakeem, Kareem, Wilt. Like a lot of them plagues is like really dominant. Shaq, like it's not really much you can do against that. I'm be honest. Bill Simmons list: Tracy McGrady was 77th all time, whereas Robert Parrish was ranked 59th all time. I'm sorry, but Robert Parrish was not a better basketball player than Tracy McGrady. But all things considered, you could say that he had a better career. career. The third thing is that for every player that you feel deserves a spot on this That's period, facts. That player must take the spot of another player. 
Far too often, I see all-time lists and people criticizing those lists, mentioning players that they think deserve a spot on that list. But I mean, honestly, though, if, if tier one is this, Kareem has to be up there. I've seen somebody say that. No clue how Kareem is tier three. Zero clue. I don't, I don't get that. I don't get that. I don't get that. I don't get that. But if 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 he tier one with, with MJ, he got to be tier one with MJ too. That's just me. They can't elaborate on who exactly they should take that spot from. The fourth factor in my formula and one of the biggest flaws with creating all-time lists and charts is that era plays a tremendous role in a player's legacy and greatness, but there's no real way of quantifying that role. Take Fred Van Vliet of the Toronto Raptors. Fred is a solid backup point guard in today's NBA. But in it's crazy how time has changed, bro. Because Fred Van Vliet, he can go, he, he's way more than a, a solid backup point guard now. You know what I'm saying? With the skill set that he has today, Fred Van Vliet would be an all NBA point guard. The game has evolved, nutrition and training methods are getting better and better every year. The average player in today's league is without a doubt better than the average player 40 to 50 years ago. But think about it like But Fred Van Vliet is really good, so like who is flat out better, consider who was greater relative to their competition. Of course, it's not the only factor that matters, but it's an important one. And the fifth factor to consider is that I know people will disagree opinion. this list, and that's perfectly fine. It's opinion. Of how accurate a list may seem to All right, so when we going through this, we got he said he said he's gonna be consistent, but at the end of the day, it's all subjective. So he says all this to still say it's his opinion. So it may be inconsistent, but we're gonna see. We're gonna see. Will always be inaccurate to others. I don't expect everyone to agree with my list just as I don't agree with everybody else's list. In fact, I don't even think there's a way to accurately make a greatness pyramid. There are lists out there of the greatest players of all time created by former legends, current players, and established members of the basketball media, and even that list gets roasted and torn apart. Uh, people was definitely roasting that NBA 75 that the NBA uh, legends made. Below and feel free so, to tell us yeah. why you have yours arranged the way. That's a fact. Do. So now that we've seen examples, we've broken down the rules, we've seen the formula. Let's get into this pyramid. Starting with my tier five, we have John Havlicek, an OG Celtic, went eight for eight in the finals, 13-time NBA All-Star. Rest in peace to this legend. Next is Elgin Baylor, a player that doesn't really get a lot of mention these days. Averaged over 38 points per game while actively serving in the military. Held what the, the fuck? For the most points in an NBA game before Wilt surpassed him. Wait, Elgin still... Baylor tier five? That's pretty low. I would think that's really low. I would have thought he would have been like tier three minimum. Record for the most points in a final. Tier three, tier four. Well, based on how I would do it, probably be tier four. So that's not that bad. He's just a tier low for me, probably. Lead the league in rebounds, won a defensive player of the year award, won an NBA. Yeah, them big men kind of hard to hard to do. I ain't gonna lie. Next is Bob Pettit, another player that doesn't get the recognition he deserves, was part of the team that handed Bill Russell and the Celtics their only finals loss during that. Yeah, I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping on Bob Pettit. I can't cat. For those who aren't too familiar I don't know if he would even be on mine. Depending on who else he got in this tier five, I don't know if he would be on mine. 16 a game. The next player on tier five is Dirk Nowitzki, a player that has earned the respect. Whoa, of that's really low. I ain't gonna lie. That's really low for Dirk. That's really low for Dirk. I can't lie. If Dirk is tier five, is Harden even gonna be on here? Next is Allen Iverson. So one of the most common phrases with Allen Iverson is that people say he's pound for pound the greatest basketball player ever. And that may very well be true. I disagree. Fans would I would go D-Wade. If it's not D-Wade, I would go for like a more of a CP3. Puts him somewhere between top 25 and top 30 all time. Iverson is an example of a player that skill-wise could definitely fall a lot higher on this list. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm tripping, I'm tripping. I would not go CP3. I would go, I would probably say Curry first. Me personally, I would say D-Wade. If I'm being unbiased, I would say Curry though. I was tweaking right there. In the NBA throughout that stretch. Yeah, I think he should probably be higher, though. Logo himself. Jerry West in tier five? Okay, I don't know then. I don't know then. His one and eight finals record was 14 games away from having nine. If LeBron didn't have all them finals L's, Jerry West would literally be the best person, a best player ever to have, like, 
six plus finals losses. So that's just me. Of course, unfortunately, it's I don't know how many Wilt got though. Wilt might have six too. So Wilt we, is better. But Jerry is definitely nice. In fact, six of those eight finals losses were to that Celtics dynasty. Next, we have Charles Barkley. I don't think Charles' spot on this pyramid needs much of an explanation. Incredible player, MVP winner would definitely be a lot higher if he had more playoff success. And rounding out tier five is Kevin Garnett, fifteen-time All-Star, okay. League MVP. So KG, Barkley, Dirk, all, all in the same tier. That's interesting. KG really set the stage for future mobile athletic stretch fours. Now, before we continue, these players are in no particular order. He don't get credit for that, though. The That's the crazy thing. To a basketball pyramid, as opposed to a numerical list, is that there is a lot of flexibility with these tiers. Okay. For example, you can make an argument that Allen Iverson was better than Charles Barkley, or that Jerry West was greater than Elgin Baylor, but the overall premise is that they are all within the same realm of greatness. As I don't know, bro. Some of these players may be I don't know. Tier five. Others may be a high tier five, but unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. So be sure to yeah, bro. This what? To tune in tomorrow for part two of our basketball goat pyramid. The stage is set. Thousands of players to choose from, but only a handful will make it. Share your predictions in the comments below, and stay tuned for part two tomorrow, where I'll break down my picks for those coveted. Top w editing. Go what the on, hell is this? I'll see y'all tomorrow in part two. L cliffhanger though. What the fuck? L cliffhanger. I guess we're gonna have to do this like the OSM when we're gonna have to have two parts. But yeah, if you guys want that second part, just like the video. It's just that simple. Comment down below who y'all, what y'all will have in y'all tiers and stuff like that. It's just that simple. But yeah, that's gonna be it for today. If you guys want more, like the video, subscribe. You do. Further ado, your boy Fist. Might have been man. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah!